Kenny here with Gardening Simplified. It is April 9th and we're going to do things a little different today uh, and we're going to go through the garden and kind of give an update but we're going to talk about growing your own food. Being we're going to talk about growing your own food today first you're going to have to start out with some plants. Now these are mighty small but this is the way it starts out. This is my next batch of bok choy and michihili cabbage. Uh, most of you that's been around a while know I rave about the flavor of the Michihili, but it takes a lot to keep it going this time of year, and we'll talk about that as we go through the garden. I do have a few spare plants here that I'm giving away I've, to some friends and neighbors. I have a little bit of cilantro, and I have some uh, lemon drop melons, and we had more than we're going to plant, so we're going to give these away. But let's head towards the garden. As we head to the garden, we're going to stop by and see. Now, you, you know in the previous video, we harvested some of our garlic. Got it out, and we've got it here drying. Uh, some is drying better than others. I don't like when it seems like it still wants to grow before it dries, but should be all right because a lot of this is going to be uh, chopped up and freeze-dried. Uh, but we do need it to, to have some good dried garlic that we're going to save for next year's seed. But we do have a little bit here, probably more than uh, most of you grow. But I did want to share part of what the harvest looks like. Now we head out here to the garden. And a normal uh, view here would be my compost trailer sitting there. But... It's actually at the lower garden site, and we'll go down there later. We went and picked up some. Uh, but things are looking a little different out here as far as we've got a few other plants. We have some sunflowers we poked in here where we had this bare spot. Over here where we've taken out our savoy, uh, starting the garden isn't that bad. We got some yellow wax beans, and they're just now so I'm starting to pop the ground, so... Uh, that's going to be another crop. They're just uh, they just happy and coming up. We've got five inches of rain in the last two days, two yesterday, and three so far today, and they're still predicting more. So, but for us in this garden, it's not going to be too bad. This is our next crop of cilantro. Now, uh, for those that are new to gardening and growing your own. Uh, vegetables and you want to know how a lot of it's got to do with uh timing on this now cilantro is an item that i grow a lot of and i try to keep fresh around for a long time and as the other gets older i always want a new batch to come on I've, this is the next batch we'll harvest we have one that we just put in and of course we've got one that's uh looking pretty ragged so we're, we're just keeping keeping following up. Now right here's our first batch of green beans for the year. The freeze did try to get them, but uh, they did survive. This particular variety is pretty hardy. And we've got our savoy cabbage. It's still trying to go to seed. We'll see if we can collect some seed off it and still waiting for this one to finish up and go to seed. That's all part of gardening for those of you that are new to it or some of you that's old to it is collecting seeds for the next crop now here's our uh, celery now our celery we won't grow it where it looks like store-bought celery we could we could put a collar around here to uh, cause this to to be bunched up and blanch and and make nice pretty stalks like in the, the store but we find the flavor when it's, the stalks are green have a whole lot more flavor and uh, it's really tasty. Our little uh, flower corner up here, don't forget to put the flowers in there. Pollinators really like extra flowers. You can see our snapdragons are finally putting up some uh, buds there. It won't be long. They'll be uh, shooting out some uh, nice beautiful blooms now this is one variety of our uh, bell peppers this is one we grew last year 
and this is the latest one that we put in the ground so it's it's a little behind the others now it is showing that it's it's uh fixing the flower i'm not worried it's, it's good and sturdy uh it if it starts set fruit it'll get a little size on it before it does now i want to talk about tomatoes most gardeners uh if they have a garden most people always grow tomatoes now for new gardeners i want to tell you that there are a lot of maintenance on tomatoes now you can just let them go but they're not going to do that well uh, these ones here they were pruned you can kind of see on the bottom where it's missing some branches we'll come back and prune again when we see leaves like this it's kind of curling a little bit and stuff and they're touching the ground but we'll come back and we'll take all these leaves off or these branches off on the bottom and on this particular variety which this is a uh, Cherokee purple uh, we like to trim off a lot of the suckers a lot of uh, tomatoes are put on suckers this is one that's that's really good about it now when we come out here and we're going to spend some tomato time we'll come out with some black fingers but what we're talking about when we say suckers for those of you that's new gardeners are these little things that sprouts out right there at a branch you can see them they'll pull a lot of energy you can see a bigger one down here they'll pull a lot of energy from your plant and uh it'll put more energy to growth and not as much to fruit production but when you get a sucker like this you can see all these little hairs on there and what you can do is just poke this in a uh, some potting mix keep it moist and it'll start growing roots out of it and you'll have another plant if you need more plants say you've got a variety that's an expensive uh, seed variety but you want more of that those tomatoes then uh, take and pot up those suckers now I want to show you on this one in particular you see right where this branch comes out and you see this sucker now this sucker is almost big as my finger coming up here now we'll leave this and we do that a lot uh, once they get up higher we'll we'll leave some this plant is really doing good it's really healthy and uh we'll have more leaders now a lot of people say well that's going to drop your fruit production or maybe your fruit isn't going to be as big and i'm not concerned with that i, ne I never i never am now over here this is new since last week uh, we put in some uh, okra on this row over here we had to find a place to put it in and right here past it we've got some more of our uh, pumpkins here they're a similar variety to the uh, single seed challenge one and you can see this one this single seed challenge pumpkin is starting to really go crazy i'm having to make sure i keep these uh, branches going the direction i want them so so i can fill this area now pumpkins if you're a new gardener pumpkins uh take a a lot of area now this one's called a cinderella this is a uh musky i think pumpkin and uh, these are more uh pumpkin if you're going to uh, make pie filling or something like that if you're going to can some up this is a great pumpkin for that and uh we should have quite a quite a lot to to put up this year but a lot of these tomatoes already are blooming now for you new gardeners when they start blooming don't count on bees to be there just come out here and tap these flowers now that you might think that's funny but a tomato has a perfect flower so all it's got to do is be tapped to get that pollen over there to those two parts in that flower and it's going to uh, take and uh, start forming a fruit now we're going to come here in the little greenhouse while we're right here now we had some failure with some of our head lettuce it, this was a lot of romaine we had in here and i didn't water it i forgot that i just started this and i didn't come back and water it and i lost uh quite a few but 
I still have a whole lot, so I'm not going to worry about it. These cabbages, I've been talking a lot about these cabbages. These make a uh, big head. Uh, they'll they'll make a 10-pound head if you let them get that big. Uh, we've had to deal a little bit with uh, aphids. Uh, the way we deal with most of that is we just pop those leaves off. Now, you can see this cabbage here, the leaves are... are uh, yellowing and brown on the edge it's not healthy same thing with this one here so this friday when we harvest we'll harvest these heads they'll be smaller but a lot of people at the farmers market maybe they're just cooking for themselves and that'll be perfect for them but we're going to take these out because if there's some kind of problem that's going to attract insects your pest then we just take them out that's when you organic garden that's the easiest way to do that and it really cuts on cuts down on problems when we see leaves like these older leaves that just got a problem now aphids will come in on these but what we do is we'll come in here and possibly tomorrow uh, our chickens really like when we give them greens out of the garden even though they're pasture uh, chickens they they got plenty of green stuff to eat but there's certain stuff that they really like to get after now in here, here's our other uh, celery. Now, these bigger ones are growing back from where we cut the, the last celery off. These other ones, and it does look like it's time to do a little weeding in here, but these others are the same, planted the same day as that first batch that you saw, but you can see they do so much better when they're out in full sun. But some of these that, that grew back, and we did cut some uh, bunches of broccoli or uh, celery off for the market and what we do is we just cut a bunch of these uh, bigger stalks up bundle them up instead of uh, taking a head of celery and you have to go through your garden regular now we have a whole lot of these bugs let me clean this lens here I think that's a lot better but we do have a lot of these caterpillars that are coming out here into the garden now for y'all that don't like squishing bugs i i don't mind there's a lot of these maybe they're going to turn into some type of uh, butterfly but you know unchecked they they take over in here now we'll go back and we have a lot of tomatoes and we've spaced them out quite a bit bigger this year but we've got our peas going now you know we had lost our other ones they just got to where they started blooming and then lo and behold the freeze come in here and it got cold enough that it actually killed them but these here are blooming they're setting peas and you know if i wasn't looking okay there's there's some they're starting to set their pods won't be long they'll be filled out now these are little, little marvels here and as their name goes they're little they they don't get that tall but they do uh, they are a real good producer this other ones here that are tall now this is alaskan snow pea and they're starting to get loaded up too with pods now this one here you can uh once these pods get just a little bigger or at that size if that's what you want you can go ahead and uh, pick these and use them for a stir fry they're they're uh, really tasty or just put them in a salad they're they're really tender uh sweet uh got that uh, nice pea flavor but We've got we've got these all over here. This one here is actually starting to fill out with some some peas, and this does make a bigger pea than the other one. We've got a lot of varieties of peppers throughout here in the garden too. We've got uh, let's go back here to our sun gold. Now these sun golds have started blooming and uh i don't actually see any cherry tomatoes on them yet but it won't be long and just this wind and shaking them like that that's actually enough with the right conditions to to go ahead and uh poll pollinate these plants and get them going now like i say we took out our savoy i didn't talk about our broccoli but our broccoli up here starting to form head but they're actually, uh, they're getting bigger heads over here on this one. Now, 
These got infected with aphids. That's why there's no leaves on the bottom. They would do better have a nice thick uh, bunch of leaves to support them, but they will do fine that way. As you can see, uh, they're starting to form their heads. This one here is starting to get about three inches or so, and we got the same thing going on with a lot of these others. So these probably won't get uh, picked this week, but next week I look forward to taking some of these to the market and eating some. Now our onions, we've been picking out a lot of onions because they've been going to seed, but it's particularly the red ones. Now reds are known for that, but what's happened to these was the cold that we got, it affects them and uh, causes that situation. Now, we do have some uh, bigger onions over here. These are, you can see this is getting to be a pretty good size onion here won't be long those will be ready to harvest and actually if we needed a slicing onion right now we could pull that one up and go for it onions are easy to grow from seed it's kind of timing but what happens is when real cold weather comes on certain varieties like this you can see it's shooting up a whole bunch of onions which we did some like these uh the past week and planted uh to extend now our our uh, squash that we put in here to fill in this area is a lot of it is really doing nice and there's no need to to have to wait and put it somewhere else now we do have some of these that are starting to bloom this one here bloomed but the thing about this is is there's no male flower so chances is that might not make it we'll just have to see uh, these are our youngest peppers here these these are uh, habanadas, so they're like a habanero. They have that fruity flavor, but they don't have uh, none of that heat. So they're nice, fruity peppers, sweet, great one to grow. And we put a few more sunflowers right in the end of this row. Now, we have carrots in here. We've been harvesting some of these, but with the carrots, it's the same thing. These froze back quite a bit this uh past winter and what happens when they do that they sense that they're they're going through their second year to set seeds and you can see when they start looking like this they start uh growing a stem up here this one here is going to seeds and if it hadn't made a carrot which it's got got a little one there but if it hadn't made a carrot it won't make a carrot so but we'll just We'll take this one here uh, along with us. Makes a good point or two. And let's go back up here to our uh, herb garden. Now, you new gar gardeners, herbs are a great plant to put in the garden. But watch on certain herbs like your mints and stuff like that because they tend to take over. Uh, Here's our chai bed. As you know, not too long ago, we clipped these all the way back and you can see they're really getting after it. We want to make some more. We did have pretty good winds with our uh, rain. So we've got limbs here and there, little limbs. Now this here is our uh, oregano. It's really looking good. We're going to probably harvest a little bit of this uh, to maybe stimulate the growth on it get it going and over here this is where I always say our ginger is well as you can see right there and right here it's starting to pop up we haven't seen any turmeric yet but our ginger is on the way so it shouldn't be long we should see quite a few more of these uh, look like we got a little bit of a problem here with our fever few it's looks like the dirt is kind of washed up on it we just planted it out here into the garden uh, we've tried to clean out a few of these tubs we're going to put our lemongrass out and we've got some other mints that need to go in our tarragon we're fixing to harvest this it is really it's really doing good it's time to get this cut back 
our summer savory's coming back in our uh, lavender here. Now we have some more lavender plants we want to put in this same pot, but before we do, we've dropped about six inches over the past year, so we want to add uh, compost and a little perlite. We always put some perlite in there, make sure we get air so that compost don't uh, start packing in too tight and we'll put those new plants. Now we have basil right here. We have uh, four different kinds. We've got a, a lemon, a lime, a cinnamon, and the regular uh, large leaf Italian basil. And over here we've got one of our mints. I haven't looked to see which tag, but this here, the same thing. It needs to be uh, harvested and dried and then let it come back and our lemon balm is looking great we're going to harvest this up too uh, these are all medicinal herbs and uh, they've got different properties that that are good for your your body things that it wants now this is where i tell people i'm growing marshmallows <laughs> these these are my marshmallow plants, and they might be in here a little bit thick, but I'm sure they're going to do all right. But uh, this is another great medicinal herb, along with our catnip. Now, our catnip definitely needs harvested. Uh, I'm, it's not getting harvested quite quick enough. You can see how the leaves are browning on some of these, and that's usually a sign uh, that it should already be taken. It does good if it's just cut all the way back, and then uh, we harvest it out. Now these were our next to the last onions, but these were actually, they, they were put out late. Uh, you can go back at the same time when we put our leek out, but you can see they're starting to go through the bulbing phase right now, so they're starting to swell up. Uh, these, these here are some more of the red onions. These are the ones that we've been pulling for the seed tops. But you need to plan on if you're going to grow food, and especially if you're going to grow a lot of something at one time, because maybe some things grow at certain times better than others, uh, have a plan for preservation. Now with these, we take and we chop them up and freeze dry them. The, the green onions are, are great. Now she's been separating out some of the, the bottom part of the onion, and we've been uh, freeze drying and, and putting them up separate than the others so that we've got more with the green onions we've got more more green onions now this is the leek we will be picking some of this friday uh, it is really small but when you have small leek a lot of people like that because you can chop up the whole plant it's once it gets bigger you can use the, the lower section but the leaves get too tough uh, for actually using but leek is a great crop to grow especially in cool weather uh, this would have fared good in the winter we have some head lettuce here we're going to be uh, taking out some of these uh, this week carrying them to the market and uh, we've got some newer ones that we set in where we lost some there and we'll probably take the rest of these savoy out they they there's only a couple that look good, maybe these two here. The, the rest are, are definitely aphid traps, so we'll feed those to the chicken. Now we get down here, this is a new one for this year. These are sunchokes, and you can see they're starting to sprout up. There's one there, one there, one there, so it looks like every one of our sunchokes that we planted here have uh, done good. and. Uh, they should be well on their way. Now we harvested garlic here and we harvested garlic all the way up to our squash up there. We was waiting on this garlic to harvest and it's looking like it's, it's going to be time now because this is elephant garlic and once it starts sending up its scapes and by the end of the week these should be pretty good, we'll harvest these scapes. Uh, the, the scape is actually the seed head right now. It's not opened up, but it would open up. But we don't plant our garlic from seed. We plant our garlic from cloves. So uh, we'll bundle up some of these for the market. And if we have a whole lot, which it's looking like we're going to have, 
we'll end up uh, chopping these up and freeze drying them and they'll make it excellent seasoning the the scapes are actually <clears throat> they're they have the garlic flavor but they're a lot sweeter because it's putting all this the sugars up here for the nectar in these flowers so it really gives gives them a nice sweet flavor i can eat them just raw uh once i once i take them off but this will probably we'll probably do a video sometime this week or next week maybe we'll have to see we're going to let a, it dry out just a little bit because with all this rain uh we'd much rather wait until the ground dries just a little bit more and then pull these out but these squash here are doing good too they were planted the same time as that that other batch we go down here and we look at our cucumbers they're finally uh, getting some size in fact they want to grab onto everything uh, but they're getting up tall enough they can uh, start climbing up these trellises they're really really doing good we have our onions you know we had a lot of die out in this row in this row from the freeze <clears throat> so we left these and we just planted in here and that's what you can do if you're if you're an old gardener or a new gardener that's an excellent way to utilize your space better i've explained in earlier videos you see a lot of these that are double onions when the onion freezes back that's the way it comes back a lot of times is more than one onion coming out and sometimes really a lot these onions here which they look a little rough still but they're acclimating themselves these were a bunch of onions like I showed you on that first row of onions where they were sending out multiple sprouts we just took all of them even the bigger ones we moved them out here and put them into this spot this is our our next round of leek so we'll have some in succession and uh it's got a hole good won't be long it'll start shooting up like that others and then we have two more varieties of onions uh in here that are uh going to be later onions that are planted really close at at uh three inches and what what i do is once these get up to table size onions i'll go ahead and pull every other onion out of here for green onions and let the others grow a little bit longer and hopefully uh, they'll be able to go ahead and bulb too but i don't expect too much out of these onions as far as they are starting to bulb a little bit but i don't know how well they'll do we'll just have to see how that turns out over here we have our tomatillos they're they're starting to form uh little tomatillos on there all over this one here if you remember it in the last video and follow along this was one that uh got clipped off cutworm or something i just uh pulled the leaves off stuck it in the ground and you can see it's rooting in and it's uh coming back so it ought to be in great shape we have more squash over here now these uh yellow zucchinis it's these three that have kind of the mottly leaves now remember the they these ones had these yellow leaves what, whatever was the cause looks like a, it's kind of a, a eased up on them so they ought to be doing good we have some more uh, perfection to wash over here but this looks like an odd seed because it's a different variety the perfection doesn't have a yellow and a green it's that's a different variety sometimes when you buy seeds you end up with a more varieties than in that pack than just what you want these here are a couple or three uh, Cherokee purple tomatoes these were in the pots longer you can see they're not as big the, as the other ones that we showed right off the start of the video uh, but they're doing good the longer they stay in the uh, cell tray the, the more it stunts their growth because they just can't reach out and, and get those nutrients. And I'll show you that here in a minute so you'll know. But we have some more peppers here. 
and I can't keep track of varieties right off. Now these are not a pinos. These are like jalapenos, but uh, no heat. And they're starting to set blooms in there, so it won't be long. They'll be putting uh, peppers on. And then we have another variety of tomatoes down here. Now, this one here, if you see these limbs, it looks like this. Whenever we had our freeze, it... It really got to these. I need to come in. I clipped off some, but I need to clip off the rest of the, the leaves. Uh, trying to see what variety this is. We well, can't read that. Oh, okay, this is. These are super sweet 100s. These are cherry tomatoes, so they should start taking off. But, but they suffered the most. Uh, these two plants here, we got a little bit on the others, but they're they're recovering. Down here we have a couple of zucchinis, I think. Yeah, a couple of zucchinis here. And then these, I say zucchinis too, but these are uh, cocazelles. It's kind of a, a lighter uh, speckly zucchini. It's really good flavor. Anytime you walk through your garden, and if you're, if you're a lazy gardener, uh, you don't, or you don't think you got have enough time, then don't plant a big garden because you need to be able to come out here and walk through this garden and inspect these plants on a regular basis. Looks like all our peppers are are starting to to flower here, so it won't be long. We'll have uh, some more peppers. There's there are just so so many varieties in here. This here is uh, the paprika pepper. This is one we've uh, grown for a couple years now. This is the third year for them. We really uh, like these. We make our own paprika powder. I don't know if I've ever done a video on that, and I might just uh, do it this year. We also have uh, this is our sweet banana peppers right here. And, of course, more tomatoes. Now, some tomatoes do better than other tomato varieties, but and especially on the start, we got more blooming going on. These here are Martian Giants. This is a new variety for me this year. I'm going to see how good it, it does. If it does good, which uh, we'll try to save some seeds from it. And this row here, I have no idea where my tag is. Oh, it's on the other end. It's it's good to mark your variety so whenever you come back, you can... Okay, these are Martian Giants, too. Uh, so you'll be able to know what you have. And that's the reason these... I try to separate the varieties, but that's why these are kind of close here is because I don't have to worry about cross-pollination so much. Now up in the Victory Garden where we started out up there, we had some of this. This is borage. Of course, we had to come in here and pick some worms off because uh, they seem to uh, like this too. Borage is medicinal too, but it has some beautiful flowers and this is a nice healthy plant and hopefully down the road we can look and show you how beautiful the flowers are on there. Now, when I talk about uh, growing your own, now we have a lot of plants we got to get in the ground. We we have some extra okra. Doesn't look real happy, but it, it's still doing good. We have some different pumpkin varieties, uh, some uh, Sem Seminole squash, uh, some more okra, some watermelon. Now we tried to get. Most of those out here in the past few days, as seen in the last video, uh, we have cucumbers and let's see, the, these are cantaloupes here and, and uh, melons, but now we're going to talk about these plants. Now the wind keeps taking these over, but you can see here, these are, this is Rutgers. This is the Cherokee purple. Now this Cherokee purple here, is the same age as the Cherokee purples that are in the garden, but you see how small this is? When you when you hold one back, and of course, 
I'm just keeping that there for a spare case I lose one, and I don't think I'll need it. But when you hold one back, that's what happens. It's just like this. these uh, peppers here. This is a cayenne pepper. These are really trying to bloom, and you see these at the the uh, store when you're going to buy. Don't buy those because they, they're really being stressed, and they're going ahead and, and uh, starting to have a problem. We have a bunch of cucumbers down here. These are definitely needing to be put out. Uh, they will do fine if they get in the ground, but it's not going to be long. They're really going to be suffering. And as we go down here, we have some other tomato varieties. Now, when you have this many tomatoes, it takes a lot of time uh, as far as, especially initially, because uh, now we put ours in cages because it makes it so much easier. Last year we took and uh, put ours in. And we'll see if we can get this limb up. We put ours last year. We uh, did the Florida weave on a lot, and we said that's just too much work. It's easy enough to come through this way, and this year too, we spread them out more. Uh, we didn't need as many tomatoes because we did a whole lot of can last year on tomatoes, and. So this year we didn't plant as many tomatoes, but you have to go through here certain varieties. You have to really watch the suckers and keep them off because indeterminants will grow tall. Now you can run them up as two liters and that would be two main stems. And what that means is instead of pulling this sucker off, you would let it grow. Say like this one here is a little bit big. You'd let it grow and then go from there. Now, there was one variety that when we were pruning, uh, we pruned it, and it shouldn't have been. Uh, this one here is a Rutgers. It's kind of an indeterminate, and uh, you can kind of let, let it go. We have some peppers here. Uh, they're actually doing uh, pretty good. We had some that we thought we were going to lose because they, just didn't look good and then they decide they wanted to come on and and come back so that never uh never give up on them early give them give them a chance if they do start to die then definitely they'll need to be taken out now one thing we have a lot of problems with here and it would be nice but morning glories the flowers are pretty but when they take over they take over morning glories oh, choke out the plants and everything else. Now we do have uh, some more cucumbers down here. We plan to do a bunch of pickling this year and try to have plenty for the market. Now over here at the fence, now this here you could eat. Uh, we call this poke salad. It's a poke weed. And these leaves here are uh, really good cooked down. Now it's going to put on some purple berries. Now these are poisonous, so you don't want to uh, go trying to do anything with them. We just put in, uh, I'm trying to think, these, these were our lemon drop melons. We just put them in. And we're down here at our tree, and right up there in the center is some bloom. So this one's going to bloom this year which is great. I hope it does more than just the top blooms like that. But uh, if it doesn't, I guess that's what, that's what I'm faced with. We still need to take care of uh, coating into this bed. We've had, looks like a little more water from this heavy rain come down. We've got to uh, take care of it. I've come in here and I haven't completely figured that I've lost these uh, pineapple, but it's a pretty good chance that I have. Our blueberries, this year they're doing good. The cold weather fell right. We've got some nice berries forming on there. Won't be long. We'll be picking us some fresh blueberries. You can see when you put your garden on a slope how you they have certain problems with the water. We try to direct it best we can, but we can't. We can't take care of all of it. 
but all our blueberry plants in here are really doing good this this row here is all our new ones for this year now this plant does not look all that that nice uh, but all the rest of these are looking pretty good I do want to mention that don't think that when you fertilize these right at first any of your crops that you're going to end up with uh, not having to do any work later on because uh, that fertilizer only lasts a certain amount of time and you're going to have to come back and do this. Now this is one of our new uh, Titans. It is definitely loaded up with berries. We'll see how big they get. Uh, it's really got to be working hard to keep all those berries on it. So I don't know if it drops some or if it's just going to ripen them up. It just seems to be a really vigorous plant. And these are these are all Titans. And this one here is a Titan. Now we do have this one stick that's stuck in the ground right here. That was one that broke off. My wife said put it in the ground. It is still got a certain amount of green so maybe it'll take off she did plant some folks some others over here but these these two down here are turning brown so i think they're probably gone we did harvest a little bit off of our rosemary and it's doing good down here our roselle it's struggling on because it's still early roselle is like okra it likes hot weather and and it's just now started to uh, warm up. We do have uh, our lettuce is doing good. We just picked this last Friday, so it's, you can see how much it's come back. We pick it as a head lettuce or as a leaf lettuce. And I, I think I thought I saw down in here, and I don't know where it is, but uh, our cow horn started to. Uh, form some peppers now we did lose one of them and then we might stick a cayenne in here but the thing about it is cayenne looks too much like a cow horn so it could be confusing we put shade cloth over our uh, rhubarb it's doing pretty good most of it anyway uh, this leaf here ain't doing too good got flipped over and it's barely hanging on but the winds took it off, but then it was uh, overcast, so we wasn't worried too much about it. We got the last of our uh, pepper plants put out. And right here we have our globe artichokes. Uh, we had six, and now we're down to four, which isn't going to be a problem because they get pretty big. But uh, the wind actually took off the, the last one of them. Now we go off here and here to the greenhouse. We did harvest a, a head out of here uh, so we could check the flavor, see how it is. We've got to cut this plant out, and, and uh, the chickens will love it. But we have a whole lot of heads in here that are just just the right size. And I can kind of try to give you an idea, but it's hard to say because of the depth. But these are some uh, really large heads of cabbage. We've got all our citrus. That's the Older ones it's blooming, the younger ones look good. We need to sort through here and get out the ones that we uh, know we're not going to uh, take and keep. And we got to work on our new greenhouse, and we'll go through that project. We have a few elderberry plants in here that are doing okay. We have some more uh, flowers that need to be gotten out. Uh, these nasturtiums. I think not nasturtium. This Nister nasturtiums. Anyway, uh, they're a medicinal uh, flower. These are our little bitty uh, lavenders here. They're not ready. And then we got a mixed bunch of mixed flowers that, that need to go out just just for a little bit extra flowers. For those that's following along with our tobacco growth, we moved them out here to the greenhouse. You can see they're starting to get a little bit of size to them. We're going to stick some of these in the ground. They're perfect size. Uh, get those to going. 
we've started some new pineapples. Uh, I do have an old video on growing pineapples if you're interested on uh, trying that. Our sweet potato slips, these are uh, some of our orange ones. These are going to need to be uh, put out. That's our, our plans for the the next bit. We we have our lemongrass right here. Uh, it's it's doing good, and we're going to get it in the pots because we don't want it taking over. The banana trees are really doing good. They're they're uh, up in the top up there. They're still growing, but no signs of a flower yet. So we'll we'll see. I'm hoping to see that pretty soon. We have a whole lot of uh, Stokes purple. Sweet potato slips, we've done planted all we're going to. Uh, these are going to be extras that we'll carry to the farmer's market, along with, uh, I think this one is possibly uh, the purple too. I'll have to check. we still got some fig trees in, in here. They're doing good. We've been carrying these to the market, but we can only carry so many at a time. We did pull the plastic up here. And this row is ready to have something put in it. Our beets are doing good. As you can see, that's our golden beets right there. They are, uh, a few of them starting to form little beets on there. So it won't be long. You can see where they're blowed over, where we've got some uh, little beets come in here. And, uh, won't be long. We'll have some of those. Same thing with our. Uh, red beets, they're doing good. Now we did put another batch of Michihili in here. We we had a full tray, but a lot of them were, I didn't didn't water them good. The, the heat was too much and it dried them out and I didn't catch it. So a lot of them were kind of stressed and I didn't need to stress plants in here. So we picked the ones we thought were good and put out. And that's an important thing when it comes to garden because if, if you put a stress plant in, First thing that's going to happen is aphids is going to come in or other bugs and attach it, attack it. Now, this is our next uh, batch of cilantro. And we have a, our batch of uh, musclin mix. And it's some of the lettuces are getting to the size to be harvested right now. Our, our next batch of carrots, these are, these are really looking good. Uh, they seem to be smaller on this end, and I don't know if that's because uh, did they get shaded a little bit longer from the sun because the sun can come around this door opening and come in through here and, and do these, and they are kind of at an angle to where the size is. And here's one of my other projects. These are my little red pear trees. Now, you have to be devoted if you're going to grow fruit trees from seed because uh, fruit trees from seed, they can take uh, five years or so before they start producing. Up here, we have our chamomile. Now, I harvested this yesterday before the rain, so it doesn't have as many flowers on it. Uh, chamomile makes excellent tea. And we have our purple cone flower, and they're almost ready to start blooming. They're they're just right there. Our strawberries are doing good. She she's harvested these. Looks like we got a problem with one in there, and we have a few that's going to have to be replaced as soon as we get some runners off of uh, one of them that's not producing. That's what what happens. Our asparagus, we're still cutting it. Cut it today. Uh, we're letting the, the smaller ones grow up so the roots can get uh, better. But the larger ones, when they come up, it's just like that. They're, it'd be ready to harvest really quick. Our thyme, you can see it, a lot of it is blooming, which is uh, great. It'll reseed, and this will fill up. This whole bed will just be thyme, and we'll have to try to harvest the rest of our uh, garlic out of here. We just every year we get a little bit of garlic in this bed. Now over here we have a red cabbage. A lot of this we've taken out. The aphids got 
to it. So we've taken them out and we got some more that we need to take out. We've just been cutting them as we go and give them to the chickens, uh, depending on how bad they are. Now in here, this is our uh, garlic that come back on its own. But as you can see, we have come in here between this and we planted our us uh, some okra. So we make good use of that. Our deal is doing real good. Uh, we've been harvesting a bunch of this for the market uh, every week. <clears throat> and it won't be long. It'll start putting up seed tops, which will we'll, be really great. Hopefully, uh, it'll hold off till the cucumbers get ready and uh, it'll be pickling season. This here is the cilantro that we've been cutting. There's maybe a little bit that can be cut this next week where it's, it's grown back. And then hopefully by the next week, uh, we'll have our other uh, garlic going. Now we have radishes here. In fact, these are the only ones we need to get some more. And we've been picking a few of these, not very many uh, for the market. And here we are up here at the potato patch. Now, I still haven't run the tiller down the middle, and that'll be another project probably this week. Uh, it's As you can see, our potatoes are starting to bloom. Now, a lot of times I come down and snap them off because we're not growing potato seeds. We're growing potatoes. It will not affect your uh, tuber to where you can grow it as a seed potato. Some people might say that it can can't get pollinated so it won't grow. Uh, I have to say that those people are very very much not informed. But some of these rows came back real good uh, after we buried them for the freeze. Uh, and some of them didn't come back quite as well. But we have way more potatoes than what we need, so we're not going to have a problem there. I might actually run the tractor down here one more time. Uh, lay these by one more time to stand up some of these that have fallen out uh, too but that's one of those things I'm not sure I might just leave it like that and and go like that now my German butter balls did not do great they didn't like being covered and we have one plant that I can see there's another couple small ones they might grow up to make potatoes but they definitely won't be very big. Now we'll go down here to the lower garden. And those of you that just want, wanting to start out growing your own food, I have so many videos uh, on planting seeds, transplanting, all kinds of things like that that are, are really simple, easy to follow. Uh, and the, they really help you out. And I'll give you common sense knowledge. I won't throw in a bunch of that stuff that, uh, like a lot of them, uh, do do this, do that. It's This channel is Gardening Simplified, and I like to do it the simple way. Uh, we did go after this load of fertilizer today, I mean compost. So we've got another four yards that we can start putting out. As you can see, we put out our... Uh, Watermelons here, they're they're doing good. Uh, it's they're standing up good. This extra water and the overcast skies really helped them out. And we have our uh, cantaloupes in here. Now, when you garden, you need to consider a lot of things. Uh, and here's our sweet potatoes. Now, sometimes you, when you put down sweet potato slips, uh, they look pretty rough. At a certain point, uh, but don't don't figure they they will they will grow. They a lot of times they start out having a hard time and then go from there. Now we do have our purple hole peas here uh, and our green beans right here, and then we have our corn coming in here. Now we did say this is a grassy area. We might between these rows but I don't know that we'll have to we'll probably when we come back hopefully uh, we'll have to just keep an eye on it because when we come back and lay this corn by and we'll talk about that when we do it uh, it should get rid of a lot of this grass 
but these these are looking good it won't be long uh, they'll definitely be uh, coming on but we got a good stand of it there now for new gardeners when you plan your garden you need to plan that garden spot and a lot of times you're restricted to the area you have you don't now this is fairly flat but it has a low place in the middle and whenever i took and and planted this i stopped this row right here and the reason i did uh, you can see right now this low spot holds a lot of water you can see where there's a little washing right here and i think eventually i hope and i'm kind of sinking because it's so wet right here but eventually i'm hoping that the erosion will come in and level this spot out i did level it some it's not near as bad but you can still see it's holding a little water in a few places so this will probably end up grassing up what we'll do is we'll extend this line, but we won't put any drippers and we'll catch the the further end and plant some more on these. And then this row here is going to be our next row of uh, sweet potatoes. We'll have to do it up like this one and plant them in. Now, the watermelon looks like uh, we might go a little bit further on that row. We do have the drip nozzles all the way down, but we might do a little bit further on that row and maybe just we'll just end up with a little washout there, but it should be uh, to where we can go ahead and bring these in because this is uphill all the way. We tried to run the rows in a way that it would uh, keep the water out. Sometimes that's just a hard thing to do, but it's, not, it's nothing better to watch these... Uh, plants take off and thrive and once they get a hold and it takes a little extra work like I say this dirt is not that that uh great of dirt so what we do is we try to this year we try to amend it with some uh, compost that'll keep the roots moisture it should help these plants grow better uh, down here and then we've supplemented uh these plants down here, all are uh, cantaloupes and melons, watermelons, with uh, azomite, which uh, it has some boron in it. Uh, boron is definitely one of those uh, minerals that you have to have if you're going to grow watermelons. Uh, now, you might say, well, I can't afford a bunch of compost like this. Looks like my helper's coming but when you when you start doing some research start looking ar around you'll find that uh it might not be as expensive as you think now this load here this whole tra trailer load was uh a hundred dollars now yes i had to drive a few miles to get it now they do deliver if you buy like you can get a dump truck load or something yeah. depending on what size garden that might be too much but they can load into a pickup but you can find these places in your area if you're not in yeah. our area you can find them in in an area and you know i spent about 30 dollars on fuel to go get it a little bit of my time and uh so 130 dollars and i've got a trailer load of, of compost but anyway that's where we're set you new gardeners uh, take some time to uh, check out some of those uh, videos on growing any just about anything you want uh, to grow basic growing i have uh, videos on it to, to help you get started and i encourage people to grow all the time and anyway if you want to see more videos like this uh, hit that subscribe hit the bell select all Give this video a big thumbs up and of course share this video i, I thank all of y'all that take the time to do that and as always enjoy that gardening experience